Okay, we're going to take a look briefly at the game Struggle for New France. The designer is uh, Bill Molyneux. Bill, I hope I'm getting your name right. And the publisher's Schutz Games just came out this year. And the subject, of course, is the um, uh, Seven Years' War in North America. France and England at war. So uh, we're going to do my usual thing, just take a look at the pieces, give you an idea of what the game is all about. All right, let's take a look at uh, what comes in the box first. First of all, you got some, some neat cover artwork. I really like this. Showing you some French soldiers in the woods there. And uh, yeah, I do like the artwork. It's quite, uh, quite attractive. Okay, the map is quite small though. This is uh, an introductory game. Bill would be the first to admit that. And we'll take a closer look at the map in a minute. But there we've got kind of a north-south orientation. The Atlantic Ocean the 13 colonies in Canada and the Great Lakes and we'll take a closer look in a moment. You've got your combat charts here. They're on nice stock, um, double-sided movement here, player aid, combat charts, leader loss chart, and uh, your rules. Like I said, it is an introductory game so we're talking what, um, what? Seven pages of rules. So it's easy to digest. It's uh, in color. Uh, not a lot of illustrations, but it um, should be easy uh, to learn the game. And um, this is the unusual part of the game that I found, because uh, this is my first Schutz game, and the first time I've ever seen counters like these. And they're, they're kind of unique, I've got to give them that. Now, I don't know if the terminology is laser cut or what, but they're this new generation of counters that just literally fall out of the tree. And they're on very, very thick stock. I've never seen counters practically that thick, except for the old battle line uh, games. Uh, you can see there's a black background. They're only one-sided. Uh, but very thick, stiff, stiff, stiff. And I'm just going to punch a few out to show you how easy they come out of the tree. You don't have to cut them out. I'm used to cutting out counters with an X-Acto knife. These literally just fall out. You just push and away they go. And you can see. Um, that's kind of neat. I don't know if games are going to be going like this in the future, but these um, just fall out of the tree so easy. I'm amazed. No cutting uh, is needed at all. So um, let's take a look at the uh, game closer. All right, now taking a closer uh, look at the map, we're going to look at the map now from the British point of view. Now, Bill has got the uh, towns oriented so that the British player sees his towns right side up so he can read the names. And for the French player, he can see his towns right side up. So for, for now, let's just we'll take a look at the, uh, the British side of the map. Now, uh, he's got all the key towns there. One of my pet peeves of some games is if the map isn't right, then nothing can be right. But this map is serviceable. It does show the major points of contention in the Seven Years' War. Of course, you've got the town of Baltimore here, Fort Cumberland, you know, where Braddock's army kind of marched from, Philadelphia, New York, Boston. And we up here, you've got Halifax, and when we get to it, you'll see the fortress of Lewisburg. In the Lake Champlain Valley, you've got Fort Edward here, which is important. The key city of Albany. Fort William Henry. And Deerfield, which was uh, um, raided in a previous war, actually. And he's got a space here called just Hampshire. I take it that that's probably about the site where Fort Number 4 was. Um, or the Hampshire Grants. Uh, so that's pretty well it for British territory. And uh, let's turn it 180 degrees now and uh, take a look at the French. Now, you've got the um, key fortress of Louisbourg here on Cape Breton Island. It's worth three points. And you've got the fortress city of Quebec here, at the mouth of the St. Lawrence. And of course, the other important town of the period, Montreal. Down the Champlain Valley, you've got Fort Carillon, which the uh, British call Ticonderoga. And then over here, you've got a whole series of, um, well, they'd be Indian villages. Chippewas, Huron, Ottawa, Winnebago. And you've got Fort Detroit here, and uh, Fort Niagara. Now, Fort 
Uruel, which is where Toronto is today, is not here, but I don't think it was a key fort in the Seven Years' War. Anyway, you've got the Mingos and Delawares, and um, you've got connecting points between the towns, these little uh, dotted lines, I presume, are, are forest paths. So that's uh, the map overall, and each side has their own kind of victory track here, where you'll be accumulating uh, marking victory points and uh, your time record track is here oriented so the French sees it spring summer fall winter turns and each year so the uh, game begins in 1754 which is really early uh, that's actually a year well the actual declaration of war was 1756 I believe Braddock's campaign is 55 so this starts very early and goes right to the very end, 1762. So the game does cover the entire war, which is kind of neat. Okay, we'll try to take a look at some of the British counters here. Um, as you can see, they're, they're very thick. And um, they have a dull finish, which is kind of neat. And um, so there's a typical five strength point British. And there's a commander, Braddock, rated plus one, get Amherst. Rated plus one, Bradstreet plus one. Here's a destroyed uh, village counter, and uh, we'll zoom in here on some of the other uh, British counters here. Um, these are control markers, you can see, and uh, Native American uh, counters. Here's your turn record for year and season. And let's see if we can zoom in on here on Wolf. Yeah, Wolf is a plus three, which is remarkable. That's quite a rating compared to the others. Wolf was a good commander, though. Abercrombie's a plus one. Ludon's a plus one. Actually, most of the generals are plus one. Although, uh, I see Forbes is a plus two. Moncton is plus two. And Murray is plus two. Um, Abercrombie wasn't a very good general. And, uh, hmm, I mean... General's ratings are always subjective, but uh, anyway, that's Abercrombie. And uh, let's take a look at some of the French leaders here. Montcalm is rated a plus three, making him the equal of uh, Wolf. De La Vie is plus two, sounds right. Villiers, I don't know him very well. Dyskow is a plus two, he was a German officer, I believe. Contrecoeur, plus one. Ducor and Arigo and Bougainville. Rigaud would be another hmm, well questionable character. Anyway, and you've got your French regulars here too. You can see they've got the white uniform. And um, you've got more Native American Indians here and your victory point value. You've got an Abati uh, counter which gives a plus four in combat. And then these are the um, uh, French control markers. So the uh, counters um, are certainly functional. They look good. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm very amazed at the thickness of them and how easily they punch out. So um, let's take a brief look at the rules and the charts. Okay, the player aid chart uh, gives the sequence of play. So during the spring, summer, and fall seasons, you conduct the following actions. They're all rather logical. British receive new units. British player moves his forces. Resolve battles in areas occupied by both sides. And then the French receive new units, moves his forces, and resolve battles in areas occupied by both sides. End phase, adjust victory points, check victory conditions, advance turn marker. It's a sequence of play we've seen in many other games before. And like I said, it is an introductory game. It might be a good game to get some youngsters um, interested in history. Now it says here, during the winter turn, both players have the opportunity to discard any unused event cards before refilling their hand. Now, I have a concern here with my particular copy of the game, going through the rules and reading the charts. Um, my game does not have any cards, so it must be an oversight by the company. I'm not sure what's happened here, uh, unless that's an option or something, an add-on, but I don't think so. So I can't really play the game because the cards are missing but uh, maybe I can find out from the designer what's going on there. Uh, anyway, the movement chart is um, kind of self-evident too. 
you've got an army point. If they move one uh, area, they can uh, move and fight a battle. If they move two areas, they can't. Indians uh, can move uh, move one area and have a battle, and they can move two, uh, but no battle. So you can see all the uh, movement effects on the chart there. And uh, they've got some neat graphics in the background too. And so the charts are on fairly nice stock. Now this other side is your combat charts. So these are um, by number of combat factors involved in the battle. And uh, you roll a nine-sided die. Oh no, it's a die roll six, pardon me. And uh, with modifiers, there's all your modifiers. So you can see leaders are going to make a difference here. Especially when you got somebody like uh, Wolf plus three. And you have the possibility of leader loss when an asterisk result is uh, rolled. And of course your uh, leader loss chart. And uh, I'll take a brief look at the rules here just to give you an idea what they look like. Um, except the, they are illustrated in color. Uh, they seem fairly comprehensive. Um, quite simple. The spacing is good. I don't think you'll have any trouble uh, reading these at all. Um, optional rules too for solitaire gameplay. And of course here's this mysterious um, um, section chapter 9 which is uh, event cards. It says that there's two decks of cards, one red set and one blue. Um, so my copy is missing them. So it looks like that is a key element. And of course the designer's notes which I always like reading. Get into the mind of the designer and why he, his methodology for um, making the game. And there's your um, uh, terrain effects chart for the um, for the map. So that's all I have to say about Struggle for New France. Um, I haven't tried it yet, so I can't comment on its play. So in closing the video, um, I have to say it looks like a you know a nice effort for I think this is Bill's first design. It looks uh, you know half decent. Um, it's certainly as I've said before, it is an introductory game, so uh, those of you who want an in-depth simulation of the Seven Years' War in North America, I don't think this would uh, fit the bill for you. But if you want a you know, quick playing, easy game to introduce somebody to war games, this is going to be your cup of tea. For those of you who want something more advanced, um, perhaps GMT's Wilderness War would be, uh, would be better. So um, anyway, that's just an introduction to Struggle for New France by um, Bill, Bo Bill Molyneux and published by Schutz Games. And thank you for watching.